This lesson is on converting percents to decimals, decimals to percents, percents to fractions, and fractions to percents. First, we'll convert percents to decimals. To convert a percent to a decimal, just divide the number in front of the percent sign by 100. The reason why we do this is because percent means out of 100. When you divide something by 100, it effectively just moves the decimal two places to the left. Let's try some examples here and see. Let's convert 62% to a decimal. Remember, percent means out of 100. So we take 62, divide it by 100, which effectively moves the decimal two places to the left, gives us an answer of 0.62. Let's do the same thing with 437%. Take 437, divide it by 100, move our decimal two places to the left, which gives us an answer of 4.37. Finally, we have decimal 15%. We will take decimal 15, divide it by 100, move the decimal two places to the left, we will need two zeros for placeholders here and gives us an answer of 0 0.0015. Now let's do the inverse. We will convert the decimals to percents. To convert a decimal to percent, instead of dividing, we will multiply the number by 100 and remember to include the percent sign after it. This, of course, just moves the decimal two places to the right. Here are some examples. Let's convert decimal 385 to a percentage. We'll multiply it by 100, move the decimal two places to the right, which makes it 38.5 percent. If we take the number 12 and convert it to a percent, we do the same thing. Multiply by 100, and that will give us 1,200%. Finally, we have decimal 0003, or 3 ten thousandths. If we multiply this by 100, we move the decimal two places to the right, which gives us an answer of decimal 0,3%. Now, let's convert percents to fractions. Again, we'll use the fact that percent means out of 100. So the number in front of the percent is our numerator and 100 becomes the denominator. As with most fractions, we will want to reduce them to their lowest terms. For these examples, we'll reduce the fractions by finding the greatest common factor first. Of course, when you are doing the questions on your own, you can start reducing with any common factors. It would be highly recommended to review the concepts of finding the greatest common factor and reducing fractions to help you with this lesson. Also, in some circumstances, the numerator may have a decimal, so we want to eliminate this by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the necessary power of 10. Then we can carry on with reducing the fraction. We'll do a couple of examples here to show you what we mean. So let's convert these 3% to fractions. We'll start with 64%. Remember, percent means out of 100. So 64% becomes 64 over 100. Now all there is left to do is to reduce this fraction. We will find the greatest common factor, which is 4, and then we'll divide the numerator and denominator by 4 to finish reducing the fraction, which gives us an answer of 16 over 25. Let's take the next one, 112.5%. Again, we start by putting 112.5 over 100. Now, in this case, because we have a decimal in the numerator, we want to eliminate this. So to move that decimal one place to the right, we need to multiply by 10 and we have to do the same thing to the numerator and denominator. 
So we'll multiply both the top and bottom by 10 here. So that'll give us 1,125 over 1,000. Now we'll reduce this fraction. The greatest common factor is 125. So we'll divide the numerator and denominator by 125, leaving us with a reduced fraction of 9 eighths, or a mixed fraction of 1 and 1 eighth. Let's do our last decimal here, decimal 35 percent. Converting this to a fraction, we write decimal 35 over 100. Again, we want to eliminate the decimal in the numerator. In this case, we have to move the decimal two places to the right, so we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by 100. So that'll give us 35 over 10,000. We will find the greatest common factor and reduce again. The greatest common factor is 5. We divide the numerator and denominator both by 5, leaving us with a reduced fraction of 7 over 2,000. Finally, we'll do the inverse of this and convert fractions to percents. We do this by simply dividing the numerator by the denominator and then multiplying by 100. Again, remember to put the percent sign after to show it is now a percent. Effectively, what we're doing is we're converting the fraction to a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator and then converting that decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100. Here's a couple of examples to follow. We'll take 7 eighths and go 7 divided by 8. Convert that to a decimal, which is decimal 875. Now we'll convert this decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100, which moves the decimal two places to the right, giving us an answer of 87.5%. Next, we'll do two and three quarters. First, we'll separate the two and simply divide three by four, giving us an answer of 2.75. Then we'll convert 2.75 to a percent by simply again multiplying by 100, giving us an answer of 275%. Finally, we will use one sixth and convert it to a percent. One divided by six gives us a repeating decimal. Decimal one and six repeating. We'll multiply this by a hundred, which moves the decimal two places to the right, giving us a final answer of 16 decimal six repeating percent. Mm -hmm.